Hello, everybody, and welcome back once more to Anime Yay or Nay. I am the Outback Owl. I'm Kieran Cosplay. And I'm Cozy. Yep, and Used we're... Used to this high up in the lineup. Yeah, we're a little bit light today. It's a con crunch kind of situation right now, and we were the only people available. But you know what? To be fair, I think we were the only three who were really looking forward to this one this week, so... I think that's fine. We watched Zoid's New Century, or is it called New Century Zero? I was getting a little bit confused there yeah, by the title. Yeah, Cece asked me, I'm like, uh He's like, no, no, it's just New Century, and apparently it is both. Yeah, I guess it's like a translation thing or something. Not entirely sure. I mean, the Zero makes sense. I mean, it's following the guy who found the Liger Zero or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, this was, this was, I remember... This when I was, like, first really getting into a lot of, like, post-Dragon Ball Z anime whenever I was, uh, watching Toonami back in the day. Oh, yeah, this was prime Toonami slot. Hell yeah. Cece, was this your first time? First time. How was it? It was fine. Better than, uh, the original show. Chaotic Century? In some ways, yes. I feel like in other ways, maybe no. We can get into that whenever we, uh, get into the larger plot and that. Uh, do you have any other initial thoughts before we get into it? Uh, little bum Seek didn't make a return, but... Oh, yeah. Hey. <laughs> he was kind of the best part of that series. Yeah. It's kind of... I mean, he's kind of replaced with Liger now, now that the semi-sentient animals are now fully sentient, or at least that one is. It's, I don't know, it's, Zoids always had, like, a little bit of a weird sort of, like, are they alive, are they not alive, they seem to be alive, but they aren't at the same time kind of thing. It's very, like, try to thread a needle, and I'm not sure whether they do it or not, but I think they do? Yeah, I think all of them have some sentience now, at the very least. Might Whereas, be. in Chaotic Century... Most of them did not, unless they were wild, which were untamable. Yeah. I feel like I need to go into the deeper lore of this series to understand it a lot better, but... Yeah, so this is essentially, uh... I don't think they are very clear about how long past Chaotic Century this is set, but it's essentially set on the same planet after all the, the big Empire Wars are over, and now these giant battle robot animals of destruction are used for sports as most things are i guess i don't know it's kind of bizarre i think when you it think makes about sense it. <laughs> sure you know what for an anime it absolutely does like eventually you get i mean you know what we did get uh what was it g gundam eventually how many yeah. gundam series before gundam just turns into a sports anime i mean to bring it back to something we just did how long before Pacific Rim? It's just, you know, underground fighting rings of giant robots. I think they bring it up in the second movie, actually. Yes. It's very illegal, but, you know. Mm -hmm. I actually, actually, I was actually surprised because I like, uh, look, this was only uh, 26 episodes. I thought this was a much longer series for some reason. That or it just ran for much longer on Toonami because maybe they didn't have as much programming. I don't know. Did it, did it feel like when you were first watching it back when you were a kid, did it feel longer? I don't even know if I ever finished it when I, don't, I was younger. I don't think I did either. I but can't tell you what the ending actually is. I know it was leading up to the thing with the other uh, super duper Zoid that they found. The Tyrannosaurus, the Berserk Fury. Mm -hmm. Had to do with that and a tournament arc because it's a sports anime. We have to end with this tournament arc. Of course. I think they were basically setting up Liger versus T-Rex. Which... If I'm remembering Chaotic Century was kind of what they did with the end of that, except it was Tiger versus Godzilla. So a bit of a step down, maybe. I don't know. Uh, why don't we just get into the plot and talk about that. So, like we said, this is now a sports anime about uh, giant military hardware being used for sports. And we have an you under... A, <laughs> you get a team of Zoids and pilots, and yeah. Request an official match, and you duke it out for money. You duke it out in front of the judge from the Clone Wars, no less. <laughs> I love the judge, and correct me if I'm wrong, there later comes a corrupted judge? Yeah, there's, like, the dark judge. Yeah, he's funny. Yeah, I, we gotta say this, though. Samuel Vincent, who is doing a lot of, a number of characters here, he's, uh, the guy driving the wolf. 
He's, I want to say he's both of the judges, or that, or that or he's just the dark judge. He's one of the robots in episode three, and a couple other people, but he's also Double D from Ed, Ed, and Eddie. <laughs> as weird as that the is. The range. Yeah, and Crypto the Super Dog, if anyone was a fan of that. Wow. Mm. He's so. really just got it all, huh? No, like, and it's here the thing. It's like, it, it. a lot of these voice actors, like, I, I see them in their character and that, but, like, as soon as I know where they're from, I'm kind of like, okay, now I hear it a little bit. I'll, I'll go into the other people in a bit, but, yeah. So, uh, there's judges, there's teams, everyone's running around. We haven't really covered how this whole point system works or how the whole thing, I mean, winning fights obviously helps. Um, but, you know, we don't exactly know what anyone's fighting for yet. But essentially, we got an underdog team called the Blitz Team. And uh, they, they really were... suck. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you have to start with the underdog sucky team. Otherwise, there's nowhere to go. You don't want to stop start with the top team. That's going to be a boring anime. Uh, but they're getting beat up by a bunch of saber-toothed tigers, which honestly feel like uh, nothing for nothing. That tiger feels like it's straight out of Power Rangers. Am I crazy? No. No, I can see it. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I hate to say it, but like these, these Zoids, honestly, change, change one letter. Uh, and I'm, I'm feeling the Power Rangers right now. <laughs> Blitz team's getting their ass kicked and they, and then the, our main character, Bit Cloud, who's a junk dealer, a snuck thief. onto a three okay. thief. Yes. Junk procurer. I don't know. There's probably a number of different ways that he justifies this. But, He's trying to scrap, like, the Zoid parts as they fall off during the battle. Yeah, get what you can. I mean, honestly, when your entire economy revolves around giant fighting animal robots, you gotta find money anywhere you can. Like, that's that's a very niche sort of economy, honestly. I will also say, like, watching it back, I was very surprised the judge only went on visuals alone. Especially when there is cloaking technology. I'm, it is a little bit weird. I honestly, I always kind of wondered about that a little bit, because like it's a three mile radius battlefield for the most part. The judges may be somewhere in the center or off to the side or something, kind of like watching in that. But I'm thinking about it, they're always being launched from those satellites, which if you're launching them, they're probably somewhere in the vicinity of where it dropped to. Maybe they also have like satellite coverage covering everything. But maybe uh, it's so also, you would, yeah. You would think they would have seen them. You yeah. would, yeah, because he was not cloaked before he, you know what, ultimately it doesn't matter. He interrupts the match, causes problems, uh, some people get hurt, and he has to take over with this random Liger that uh, they have for some reason, but no one can pilot it. But he can pilot it because he's the protagonist. And he shows up to fight, he's the hotshot who wins the day because protagonist. He's a okay, moron. Okay. No, no, no. Let's be clear. He did not pilot Liger. No. Liger piloted Liger. Yeah. Liger was like, I'm it waiting. It was to... along for the ride. Okay, so here's here's the new fun idea. Uh, Liger has always wanted to be an athlete in this competition, but he never had a pilot, air quote, who just let him do his thing. This guy has no idea what he's doing, and therefore Liger can do whatever it wants. Exactly. Oh, it's perfect. It, it was really just fucking with him. Yep. Honestly, like, I kind of hey, like that. Hey, want to get in my cockpit? And okay. then it like shook a head like a dog with a chew toy or something. Yeah. I mean, he is... I, I, I do genuinely think Liger is the Zeke of this show because he's going to be the only non-verbal like, animal uh, character with personality. So I do still like think like maybe Zeke's a little bit better. He is also like the de facto like everyone desires Liger Zero. Oh yeah, they have no after idea because the he's show a... kicks off. Yeah, he's like a he's like an Uberzoid or something or a super duper Megazoid. I don't know. I feel like I'm starting to make it sound too much like Power Rangers at this point, but yeah, he's he's there's no other Zoid like him, and there's no other protagonist like Bit. Or whatever. Anyway, they they start doing matches, and then we start rounding out our cast of uh, villain, not really villains yet, but rival characters. You got rivals, uh, the yeah. sniper lady, and you got uh, Naomi. Yeah, she's cool. How dare you cool. just call her sniper lady? I mean, I mostly remember her as sniper lady. I do remember her, her being one of the cooler side characters. She's certainly better than, um, oh god, what was his name? 
Harry. Harry Champ? Oh, what's he going to do? He's going to be king of what? We still don't know. I was like trying to count. Did he say it like seven times in that episode? Yeah. Oi. Yeah, anyway. Like, is it skipping or does he actually just say it this much? Oh, he says it, it that much. Yeah, I mean, well, when you think about it, like, animes love to do that. Like, yeah, you just get characters that have catchphrases they don't stop saying. But why you gotta make your catchphrase your name? <laughs> I mean, he's an egotistical Nepo baby, so what are you gonna do? And his only friends are robots. Again, he's an egotistical Nepo baby. Of course his only friends are robots who can't leave. Uh, but he's also in love with uh, the girl on the team. Uh, Lena. Lena, yeah. I'm trying to make yeah. sure I'm looking at people's names right now. Who uh, We might as well get into some of the, the voice actors here. Which, like, it, it just is funnier to me thinking about who's playing who. And I'm thinking of their other characters. Harry is light from Death Note. Which is <laughs> funny as hell to me. Are we talking that dub? is hilarious. Yeah, dub. These are the dub actors. Okay. Uh, okay. Bit is Inuyasha, which makes it funnier because yeah. Lena is uh, Sango from Inuyasha. But more importantly, she's fucking Barbie from all of those from... t- direct-to-video Barbie oh. movies. All of them. Damn, she has a good voice. Yep, but like you hear it now a little bit. No. <laughs> oh, no, I hear it, 100%. There's also uh, someone else on the team was played by Bill Switzer, who uh, was in a number of things that I did watch. He was in uh, X-Men Evolution. He was, uh, oh, my God, do you guys remember a show called Mummies Alive? No. no. Oh, my God, we might have to, like, look it up. It's like a, It's like a weirdo, like, wow, this was a thing. It was essentially a bunch, like, Okay, you know Yu-Gi-Oh! where they reincarnated a pharaoh? Well, apparently yep. they do that with, like, some kid in New York, and there's, like, a display of mummies, and they come back to life, and then they have, like, Power Ranger transformations, and they uh, defend him from an evil other ancient Egyptian curse thing. I don't know. It was super fucking weird, but I was into it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we have to check that out at some point, but yeah. I think not too many other points of note, I don't think. You got a couple people here. Uh, while I was looking that up, Cece, uh, how did the Zoids animation compare to Chaotic Century? Because it is a bit different. Yeah, uh, less jarring. Still a little weird, but like it's it's less like black and white, I think. Yeah, they had they got a little smoother. It was like, I think they had two more years to work on it since chaotic century so it's a, it is a little smoother but it is still kind of very much like looped early 2000s animation for a lot yeah, of stuff yeah but it didn't look like they were just doing stop motion with action figures anymore yeah they definitely uh they did a little bit better i think they they edited it a little bit better being said i think although this overall from a production standpoint looks a lot better i think I think I weird, and maybe the characters are a little more interesting. I think I like the setting of the original series, Chaotic Century, just a little bit more. The whole Mad Max uh, yeah, I think, thing. I think the setting does offer, like, a bigger, like, world. Mm-hmm. Because you're really not getting a lot of, like, exploration of the planet they're on it's really because it's like a sports anime focused on the tournaments and you know fighting to keep liger safe yeah like whereas you know there was a whole war going on in chaotic century yeah like i bring up the I, i'll bring up the g gundam thing again like I, I and you're more of the gundam expert than i am but i'm figuring g gundam being the sports anime one although it had a, some deeper plot elements to it i don't think it's, it goes anywhere near some of the other ones do with like no exploration of theme and whatnot that being said though i think this works a lot better for its intended purpose of selling, selling toys? toys to children oh, yeah. yeah i and it's mostly, I, part of it's because uh, I, I saw this show because it was just on more whenever I was buying stuff. I had a number of toys from this particular series. Liger Zero was one of the first ones I got. Oh, so. hell yeah. I'm trying to think here. So, 
we really didn't get to like some of the really cooler villains, which is a bit of a shame. Not to say that what that are you uh, talking about? Prince Naomi Harry is and... the coolest villain. Is he a villain or is he a air quotes rival for bit? Barely even, because like I don't even think he like acknowledges them that much. I don't even think he knows he is th- that third episode. He doesn't even know why they're fighting. I don't think he particularly cared either. I mean, yeah, he's no. not drinking that respect woman juice, so that's kind of villainous. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> but to be fair, I don't think Bit is either, so is he villainous? Um, I mean, he did he... try to steal a bunch of stuff. Okay, yeah, that's... Well, <laughs> I don't... <laughs> is I it stealing is if it's disrespect broken? disrespect for everyone. I think he's like... It's not disrespect women, it's just... Don't Bit has anyone. main character syndrome without ah. actually having main character potential. He's He's got main character syndrome and himbo tendencies. This could be a deadly combo. Mm, is he pure of heart? Not really. I don't think he counts as a himbo. No, I guess not. Too bad. I mean, they try to, like, redeem him as the show goes on, but, like, he's still always kind of maintains that like jock vibe of like I'm kind of a dick because I think I'm amazing. Yeah, but I mean I think that the series kind of is going to have to have that at a certain point. I mean, you're not going to have as many moments to uh turn someone around and like try to be a hero in this particular setting. A lot of times you will have like sure you do things for the team or something like that. But if you're looking at like this versus like Chaotic Century, who also kind of had a bit of an annoying protagonist out the gate, there's a lot more moments for that protagonist to be heroic or turn the tide or do a number of things because the stakes are so much higher. Like people will oh, die yeah. if I don't do the right thing. What happens if Bit doesn't do the right thing? Um, we'll lose the match. Probably go down a rank or something. I don't Maybe know. Someone breaks an arm. Yeah. Honestly, I, I, I genuinely feel like three, I'm just going to call them tanks at this point, shooting at you from close range. You should be dead, my guy. You and your bizarro hair. I hate that guy's fucking hair. I don't know what it was <laughs> about that. I was stuck on that for a minute, man. Everyone else looks fine. Even like Lena with her weird like I never noticed that when things. I was young. I like, forgot what about it. What the fuck is it? I think it's a hat. I think it's a hat because she doesn't have it on when she comes out of the shower, which we have to have our fan service moment. And uh, yeah, so it's got to be a fashion yeah, accessory. Okay. I mean, we can talk about how the show in general does not drink its respect woman juice. I think they respect. No, they don't respect Naomi. No, they don't. <laughs> they absolutely do not. If they respected her, she would have won. What is yeah, what is the verdict? Is is bit a tactical genius or is he a complete moron moron Moron. okay he is not vash stampede i was gonna go with spike spiegel because i feel like spike on a number of occasions has done that whole oh i don't know what i'm doing boom boom and i randomly hit you with stuff whoopsie doodle i really feel like they were going more for a vosh approach but he's so much more likable yeah, because he's not actually full of himself. He's That's true. An idiot and he acknowledges it. He's humble and he drinks woman juice. <laughs> he do drink that woman juice. Respect women juice. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he ever drank Just... woman. Fair, I don't think he drank anybody juice at any point. <laughs> What's his face? The guy with the scr- cross. He drank woman juice or something. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh <Ew. laughs> I'm, uh, I'll stop because that you, you're right. That that creates a really weird visual. Uh, anyway, Bit and Lena and what's well, Wolf guy? Brad Hunter. Brad. Yeah. I feel like is he the only person with like kind of? Well, I guess some other people have some normally names. Also, like fashion man. The fashion is fashioning. The fashion man, Brad Hunter. Or are you talking about Harry no, Champ with his all tassels? Of them, their sense of fashion. It's fashioning. I, I mean, they're they're in post Mad Max world, so I mean, it's gonna be weird. Oh, see, the sad thing is, is like I think it would actually work, like today, like right now in our society. Probably. Maybe I just feel like it's just it's very extra. Okay, yeah, maybe get rid of Lena's stupid hat. 
Should we give her another stupid hat? What kind of stupid hat should we should, should she wear? Give her Toad's hat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why not? I don't know where I got this idea, but I could have sworn Leon died. No, he comes like, back he was later. Just like, I... oh, I want to just go off into the world. I was like, what? I he I do remember seeing because I don't really remember watching the very beginning of this show, but I do remember he came back later with a different Zoid. Like that was his thing. Yeah, like he he just like fucked off, and I'm like, I swear to God, there was like a thing where everybody was depressed because somebody had died, but I guess it wasn't him. We must not have met that person yet, unless it's their assistant who died. The kid. Uh, Ooh, Jamie. They killed the kid. That's fucked. Maybe the dad dies. <laughs> you know, fathers dying is not the craziest thing. Because I feel like he doesn't stay as, like, the head of the team. I don't remember nearly enough about the show, obviously. I'm trying to find a dead person. <laughs> <laughs> there, I do remember a point where we thought Harry died, but he just passed out. They were trying to, like, make it's a, a moment and someone... a thing to do. Yeah, he was trying to have a moment, and then someone ruined his moment. I'm not seeing any death going around here i mean unless some villains die but i feel like that ultimately you know just kind of happens every now and then maybe it was just like kidnapping or something i just remember like an episode where everyone was super depressed maybe they just lost yeah that's a possibility i mean i know some of the teams they go up against are a lot better than them i'm specifically remembering the guy with the elephant and the guy with the cheetah I know they lost the cheetah like two or three times. So that was a whole deal. I mean, that scans. And sports anime is a big loss is akin to somebody dying. Or yeah. seniors graduating. That's also like a death. I mean, everyone here is a senior already, so it doesn't matter. That or they're in the pro league, so... Do you think there's amateur level Zoid fights? How do you even buy a Zoid? <sighs> yeah. Okay, when you make the military hardware, like, an actual sport thing, like, it creates a lot of holes to pick at in your, in your world. So, okay, my theory, since Harry is obsessed with Lena, is maybe the doctor worked for Harry's family and just, like, siphoned some money off to start that team. But also... The very first episode, he's like, oh, if we lose this match, I don't know how I'm going to pay you people. Two of them are his kids. True. One of them is his ward. True. And the other is, like, a friend of his kids. Yeah. Who are you paying? I mean, I, th I don't know. It's unpaid They all labor. live there on the snail carrier thing. I did look it up. That thing is apparently an actual... That Their carrier is a Zoid and it is a snail. Oh. It's essentially the giant version of the trucker girls thing from that we saw in Chaotic Century. Which now makes me wonder if Bits, like, truck, his invisible truck was also sentient. Because I'm just like, you know, you're throwing it out everywhere else. It's kind of like that weird Pokemon thing of, like, there used to be normal fish back in, like, early on Pokemon. But now there's no more fish. Well, I mean... You know what I mean? He is probably, like, retrofitting all of the Zoid parts onto the truck. Is the truck a Zoid? We'll never know. I don't think it ever comes back. But it's an interesting thought. Which ones was your uh, guy's favorite Zoid from this one? Naomi's. Yeah, the sniper one. Because it's red and cool and... Yeah. Better than pretty everybody lady. else's. Well, a pretty lady inside also helps, definitely. I'm trying pretty to lady think that here. Can fuck you up. Uh, I love a yeah. woman who can fuck me up. I mean, Liger Zero's cool, but I feel like we didn't really get to see any of like the really cool features it has later on. Yeah. I do remember those really well. Um so, <laughs> he looks kinda lame right now. Well yeah, you got base model Liger. Really he cool. Went real fast. It's really cool when you get the the other three colored versions of him with the the jet booster liger and the swords liger and the artillery piece liger. 
I don't know. I'm trying to think. Like, beyond those... I know Brad's stuck with the regular old wolf now, but there's a really cool, like, he had, like, it was, like, the black fox or something that he got later that was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think Lena changes hers, too. She gets a gun sniper, like Naomi, except instead of being a sniper rifle thing, she loads it up with as many cannons as she possibly can. Because it's Lena. Yep. Lena and Brad really suck. <laughs> Which is, I don't feels... know. I kind of liked her episode when she was like, ah, ha, ha, "Everybody's fighting over me," and then like swept the floor with them while well, they weren't paying attention. Okay, she basically swooped in at the last second and took out a bunch yeah. of people who are already done fighting. She she did not have any actual skills in that. In no, her. I mean like. I don't, I don't want to try to sound like I, I know what I'm doing here or, like, I'm some sort of tactician or whatever, but, like, just looking at the big old bison thing that she's got with all those cannons, why are you running into a fight? Why aren't you staying in the back and just launching artillery fire at people? I feel like that's what your thing would be good at. The wolf, the, the tigers and stuff, those things can run and move and do... Is a bison I known feel for like agility? the bison would be a really good, like, charging zoid. Maybe, but at the same if time... If she wouldn't have stacked all the guns on it. <sighs> yeah, man, I don't know. Maybe she gotta get those, like, side jet things that uh, Harry put on the... Make it a suicide bomber? Not I'm... like a full suicide bomber, but like... Like a suicide charge kind of thing. I get what you're going yeah. for. Maybe Just blow it up in the enemy line. But like, I got to be real with you. That first episode, those tiger, the the saber two tigers knew what they were doing. They had like one guy with a big gun, and the other two ran and and took out anybody that the gun didn't they shoot. Took down. them out in like two seconds. Yeah. Like honestly, that probably should be Lena's job, but nope. She's a she's an she's got personality. <laughs> Honestly, relatable. Any class I play, I'm trying to frontline. Yeah, you do do that, don't you? I guess maybe it, like it could be heavily armored. Maybe it's supposed to tank a little bit. It it definitely did not. It took one hit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you can't tank. One hit and she's like, "Oh no, it's offline." Like, Leon really was the only one pulling some weight on that team. And he just <sighs> fucked off. Yeah. He was like, oh, thank God, there's another idiot to work with them. And just, bye. Yeah, I needed to make sure they were in good hands. Now you just need to make sure you had a replacement. That's it. It didn't matter what kind. Because, like, Bit and Brad end up having, like, a really... I don't want to say friendly rivalry, but, like, it gets yeah. intense at points. But, like, they kind of match each other for improvements in learning how to, like, actually pilot. See, I could see I that like a little bit. I feel like we don't get to see that for Lena. I feel like she just always kind of sucks. I mean, she's also feels like she's kind of, I don't want to straight up say egotistical, but, like, it's got kind of like that. I, no, wait, doesn't she have a bit of a rivalry with Naomi? A little bit? Or she just doesn't, doesn't like her. Yeah, because Naomi is better than her in, like, yeah, every yeah. way. Yeah, that's true. I kind of thought, and this might be because I, like, saw later, I thought Leon was set up to be Bit's rival. Because whenever he comes back, he just straight up kicks his ass. Well, I meant in, like, learning. Oh, because okay. Because even though Brad is supposedly an experienced pilot, he's kind of on the same level as Bit. Because they all suck together. That is integral to a sports anime. You need a rival that's growing at the same pace as you. Even if that rival is your teammate. And then you have, like, your arch rival. Who's, yeah. like, your actual foil later on. I feel like that that kind of came in the form of Elephant Guy and Cheetah Guy, though. At least from what I remember. And I and th there was uh, the guy with the Berserk Fury. And I'm like, but I almost feel like they didn't have a relationship with that guy. He was sort of just off doing his own thing. Oh, God. Uh, so they renamed the Berserk Fury in the English dub to that because the original name was the Berserk Führer. Oh. Oh. Yeah, yep. it was some... They're not going to let Hitler fly. 
Oh, God. He was part of that, like, evil, like, paramilitary... Oh, God. He was a fucking neo-Nazi. Oh. The final battle is against a bunch of neo-Nazis. Oh. Jesus. No, now it hits too close to home. I take it back. Fuck. I don't like this anymore. I mean, they beat the Nazis. So that's good. They beat the Nazis at a sports tournament. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Ooh, a lot of good that does. I shouldn't say Nazis. They're probably like... like I... I didn't pay enough attention when I watched the full series back in the day. So so don't get me on lore crap right now. But I'm assuming they're like a remnant of like whatever was left over from the previous series. The Chaotic Century. One of like whoever lost Chaotic Probably Century. the Empire. I think the Empire was the evil guys. I'd imagine. You say the word Empire and it's pretty much, yeah. Thanks, Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, have there been a lot of good Empires? In history, in general. Um. Yeah, Helic Republic, Golos Empire. I mean, their whole p- plot was to bring back, like, a thing called the Death Sore. You're not exactly, uh, gonna get a whole bunch of people to be like, yeah, they're the good guys. Yeah, I'm assuming they're, like, somehow, they're First Order. How about that? Is that... <laughs> Does that go down? Does that taste a little bit no, better? No, because they were Nazis. <sighs> they are, but we're just not going to say it. I don't know. I I'm trying to think. What else? What else can we talk about here? This is this is actually a much shorter series than I'm remember than I remembered. Because the original one was 67 episodes between like, I mean they had the time skip in there, but yeah. And this was kind of just a short little. I mean, a war thing. is a lot longer than a tournament. Fair, very fair. And then I kind of remember the one that came after this. Do you remember Fusers, where they started like doing? You could combine Zoids together, and make uh, Mega Zoids. <laughs> no. It came like, out in like. When I think of Zoids, this is always the one I kind of like default to. I feel that. That was my default for a while. But I do remember watching Fusers a little bit because they also had Liger Zero and it could combine with a Phoenix and start flying. So that was pretty cool. So it's like also... Steven Universe. <laughs> I didn't watch that as much, but I'll take your word for it. Uh, <laughs> there was also a series later called Zoid's Genesis. There's no connection to the previous series. Show takes place a more post-apocalyptic setting. Following a cataclysmic environmental geological event known as God's Fury that has destroyed much of civilization and devastated the planet. The show returns to the more adventurous and war-themed styles reminiscent of Chaotic Century. Okay. So, like, the Rapture? Maybe. Then they had, most recently, in 2018, they had Zoids Wild, which is just giving me a character list and no... Plot synopses, which it doesn't sound like a good idea. Wait, Shin anime Shish? series based on Zoid's fifth Zoid anime is a cross media relaunch of the franchise, encompassing a new toy line manga series video game for the Nintendo Switch, predominantly aimed at boys aged 10 to 12. I mean, sounds about right. I don't like the look of that Liger, it looks like weird. Hmm. There's a like full generational Zoid's battle brawler game. I want to play. Yeah. I think I still have my kits somewhere. I'm trying to think here. Any other things to, to talk about with this series? Uh, Bit eats with his feet. I'll take your Does word for it. Does he always, or is that just in that situation? I don't know if it's always, but he is fully capable. He can. Looks well practiced in doing it. That's I true. will take your word for it. Sounds like a Thing. It was literally in episode one. I must have missed it. Doesn't matter. Anyway, uh, what's our final verdict on this? I'm I'm somewhere between a man a light yay. I think I'd like this more when I was a kid because it was probably my first introduction to this, but I think I just might have seen better anime at this point. <laughs> Still fun. Uh, I'm a little light yay. I think 
it's like fun to just have it in the background because like it is a pretty silly series Mm. like it does have its serious moments but a lot of it is just kind of like joking around I might switch it up. I might switch to Light Yay because, like, these three episodes might not be the best encapsulation of the series. I do, you're right, it does get a little bit better as it keeps going. And I definitely didn't get to see some of my favorite, like, villains in that yet. I think when that comes around, it probably goes way more into a Light Yay area. Yeah, I think Light Yay is fitting. It is good background stuff. Mm. We've been con crunching all day, as previously mentioned, so. Yep. It's been and nice letting it run probably gonna have to do more for the rest of the night so if you want to put that on the background or you could put next week's show on in the background because we got to say what we're gonna be doing whenever we come back from that convention uh so this one this one's kind of a recommendation from me and envy because we both watched this and actually both really loved it uh we're, we're it words yeah words, words. Al. <laughs> it came out on netflix I don't know, a couple months ago, actually. I don't know how well it did, because I don't look up a whole lot of discourse all the time. But I really enjoyed it, Envy really enjoyed it, and we're going to recommend it and hope that everyone else really enjoys it. Have you guys heard of Romantic Killer? Uh, no. It's about a girl who doesn't want to get into a romance, but is now stuck in the tropes of a shoujo romance manga. Oh, tragic. Yep. And you get to enjoy that tragedy with us next week. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Hey, thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell icon for notifications. If you enjoy this video, give us a like, and if you haven't already, check out some of our previous episodes, our daily gaming videos, or our parody series, Madoka Magically Abridged. See you next time.